What's going on you guys? Welcome back to the channel. And before we get into today's video, and it is a really fun one, we went riding with a really awesome dude. His name is Juan Pablo. He's an actor, he's a shredder, and just a really rad guy overall. So that's gonna be a really fun one in a little bit. But I just wanna take a moment and say that this video is sponsored by Orbea. These are the Orbea Wild FSs. They are long travel 29 e-bikes made by them. Uh, really awesome bikes overall. We've been digging them so far. Nice aggressive geometry. I'll put a link Link in the description of this video to the bikes themselves but without further ado let's get into today's video Ooh. what's going on you guys good morning uh, it was a really early start for us today because we had to make the drive from Orange County to LA that's where today's ride is going down really awesome ride with a cool guest to the channel like this dude is super awesome uh, I think you guys are gonna enjoy this you guys probably already know because it probably was in the thumbnail but uh, yeah it should be a fun day riding the Santa Monica mountains so because we're in Santa Monica we have to do typical hipster things one of those hipster things is visiting like a cool coffee shop I feel like that's a big thing of like the whole Santa Monica culture <laughs> Okay, so amazing coffee. I think that coffee shop was called like Cafe Lux or something like that. Uh, so yeah, 10 out of 10 on the coffee. Definitely recommend it there. Uh, got a lot of looks. That's the other interesting thing about like this part of town. Uh, I don't think they're used to seeing dirt bags roll up to the coffee shop, but uh, yeah, 10 out of 10 coffee. Uh, four out of 10 on the hippie vibe. So headed to the ride. All right, you guys. So we're finally gonna introduce the special guest for today. It was funny because I was trying to give him some film advice like we normally do with interviews and everything. And then I realized that I'm actually the mediocre beginner in the whole film world here and he's the expert. So maybe we'll let him take over the channel, but let's introduce him. Here he is. <laughs> actually, you didn't realize it. It was Hana. Oh yeah. <laughs> She's the one that said like, uh, dude, I think, you know, he'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, and so what was your name? My name is Juan Pablo Rava. I am a Colombian actor. I love mountain biking. I've been riding for about seven years now. And well, as you can see, this is my passion. Dude, yeah. so he's got, we're, we're gonna get to the bikes in a little yeah, bit, yeah, yeah. but I need to ask you about the acting. Yeah. So what are some like more of the roles that you've had that people might know you from? Well, I've been acting for like 20 years, but most of my, my, my work was in, in Colombia and Venezuela before. Now, you know, I got kind of known a little bit more with, uh, with Narcos. I did the role of Gustavo, which was Pablo Escobar's cousin. And uh, that got me also to move to the States. And once in the States, I did uh, the 33, I did Shot Collar. I did a small role in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Then I did uh, Six, which was a Navy SEAL drama for the History Channel. And now I'm doing Coyote for Paramount Network with Michael Chiklis. So awesome. Yeah, and man. I have to ask you, an actor like yourself, how does someone like you get into mountain biking? Like, how'd you find that? Well, I was um, right when my wife was pregnant with our first son with Joaquin, I kind of wanted to, to, to really get into something meaningful, right? I was doing CrossFit, I was not that happy, I was kind of getting injured. Uh, so I started doing some yoga and that, that felt good. And then my best friend who's an architect in Colombia, Ricardo, he said like, dude, you should come ride bikes with us. I'm like, bikes? Like, well, where do you ride bikes? He's like, well, we have a group, you know, it's just, you know, regular kind of gravel riding, you know, with $200 mountain bikes. And so I went once, it was kind of cool and I, you know, then, Started kind of getting into it, you know, then the $200 bike, dollar bike became a $500 bike. And I was like, okay, I'm, I, I like it. You know, I took my first hits. I was still liking it. I, I stopped doing CrossFit. I was feeling great. I started feeling kind of a, there was a, like an emotional connection with the guys. I started calling it the bike therapy, right? So literally we would all just go biking and just vent out, you know, our problems and, uh, you know, and talk about life and marriage and kids and stuff and everybody just came home like super relaxed. So that's when I realized, wait, there's something cool to this, right? Then uh, we moved to the States. My first son was born. That's when I got my first like serious bike. And I took a job in Venezuela 
a project there and I was in the street and I saw a guy with a double suspension bike. I'm like, hey, hey, what's up? I'm right, right bikes. He just looked at me like, hmm, but do you ride ride bikes? I'm like, yeah, yeah, dude, I'm, I'm cool, I'm, I can ride. He's like, because we, we, we do some enduro trails here. Like, have you ever done that? I'm like, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I had no idea what he was talking about. And then, sure enough, he takes me. I almost die 10 times, and I was hooked. Actors, you guys you guys need the, the money maker, the face. Mm. Is it ever terrifying not riding? Are you ever worried about injuries? I know well, yeah, yes I am. I mean, look, I'm gonna tell you two funny stories about this. So, I was shooting the 33, right, in Colombia. And we had to lose a bunch of weight. Like right now, I'm weighing 190, 98, something you, like that. You look really good. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I went down to 175 because for the film because it was the miners who got trapped uh, in Chile. And um, I was biking a lot. And so the producers were getting, you know, they were getting concerned. And one, you know, one day they told me like, dude, you, you, you have to be, you know, you have to stop this. And I told them, if, if you take this away from me, it's, it's bad, right? Like, and I put an example, like, look, look at some of the other people, you know, when they finish working, they really don't have much to do. So maybe they're, they stay up late or they go partying, whatever. Like I go to bed at 8 p.m., wake up at five, pedal every single day. Like, and this is my focus. This is what I love. This is how I concentrate. And they kind of realize, you know, and I told them, I'm gonna be careful. So with the years, I've kind of, you know, really started understanding what why my limits are, right? And whenever I'm shooting, I never go full idiot. You know, like I really, really take care of myself. And with, uh, with the last show, the, the one show I'm doing now, Coyote, I was signed and I still went and did the North Star uh, EWS, which was <laughs> gnarly. Stage four, it was a massive shoot, huge rocks. And all I could think about is I cannot hurt myself. I need, I need to do my job, right? So I guess, you know, once you write a lot, you really know your limits. Of course, anything could happen, but I really, really go extra careful when I'm, when I'm working. Well, uh, getting into mountain biking, getting yep. to this new sport, this new world. Um, I mean, the actor world is just one thing. What have you noticed about like the mountain bike community? It's great, man. I have to tell you, I've, uh, I love riding bikes. I love people who ride bikes, who enjoy bikes. It's such a cool community, you know, everybody's so, lay lay back you know everybody just loves riding and that comes with loving nature too which is something that i also love and enjoy so everything about the mountain biking for me has been life-changing it has become not only a way to stay fit but to be healthy emotionally healthy mentally you know this is my time i ride mostly by myself sometimes at 5 a.m i wake up super early those two hours that's like my zen that's my meditation and I've had, I've met so much incredible people. I'll just go anywhere in the world with my bike and just even if I don't know anybody, I'll just, you know, through Instagram, just get in touch with people and, and, um, and just connect, right? And that's, that's, that's something I love. Would you ever play a mountain biker in a film? You think that might be a future role? Listen, if they ever do a film about mountain biking and I'm not the lead role, <laughs> yeah. somebody is going to feel pain. You wouldn't even need a stunt double. Uh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go over some of your sponsors, some yeah. companies you work with. So I, I, I don't call them sponsors because I'm not a professional writer. So what I, I like to call myself the most um, sponsored non-professional writer. Yeah. <laughs> no, I've, I've, I call them collaborations because basically, you know, over the years I've met amazing people who are also, you know, lovers of mountain bike, but they do amazing products. So for example, I love uh, writing Supercast stuff because I'm friends with Jake from Supercast. And now recently I've started writing with YT. I became a friend with Marcus and, you know, for a while we had been talking about, you know, doing, doing maybe something together. So now I'm riding these YT's bikes that are absolutely fantastic. I ride with Crank Brothers. I'm also friends with Gaspare, and of course, our own pre-owned buddies from DVO. Yeah. This is something that I just absolutely love. So that is that is that is basically it, you know? YT, DVO, Supercast. One of our buddies, he got injured and the way he actually recovered from injury was with an e-bike, which was so cool because you know he could have an e-bike, he could ride with us and not have to stop riding even though he was injured. So that was really, really cool. And that's how we started kind of getting a feeling appreciation for them. So I still think I like riding my analog bikes more just because of the feeling, 
But for example, if I have to ride with my kid, like I'll put my baby here in a little seat, right? Look at this. So I literally have the bike set up and I, I can just put the seat. Oh, so cool. My baby comes with me and then I tow my kid, you know, on the way up and then it becomes a family affair. Well, what do you it's think fantastic. I sit on the front and then you just pedal the decoy up? Um, <laughs> I say, I say that would be testing this on your fire. <laughs> So we've made it to the trailhead. Yes, we are. And I think we're going left. And I believe this is called Westridge Trailhead. I'll put info in the description of the video. But I will say that road to climb up here, yeah. a lot easier on the e-bike. Yeah, it's safe. It's safe. <laughs> I get to call this, you know, my backyard. I'm feel very lucky now. So rad. And so the reason we're riding e-bikes here today is e-bikes used to be illegal here. But you were saying Curtis Keen and the guys over yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, they did. They did a big push, and uh, you know they, they basically explained. The thing also with e-bikes, I guess people who don't know about them, they think uh, they're like motorcycles. And you know when they went and they explained what they were, it became it became legal to ride them all over. So awesome. Yeah, man. And we were told we got a steep climb coming up. Oh wow. Oh wow. <laughs> Ah, ah, can we make it? Oh, barely. Oh, oh, that was terrifying. Easy peasy. Oh, it's, it's just, man, I'm just a chicken. I think she's in turbo mode. All right, you guys, this trail is called Scorpion, and he's gone. Woo! Oh, man. Trying to keep up for the movie star, and I'm not doing so great. Woo! Jump. Oh, that's insane. Oh my gosh. Woo! Oh, it is loose. Making my way down, trying to stay on the bike. Woo! Oh man! Whoa. Definitely a rowdy time. Wow! Scaly. Woo! Ah! Oh. <laughs> I did not see you stop. How was it? <laughs> It's really fun. Yeah. Really shaly, but fun. All right, here we go. Sweet. <laughs> Charging. Gap to yeah. the right hander. Oh my yeah. gosh, that was fun. It's a little. Yeah. So, you guys can see the grade here, but normally this is a hike a bike. And I'm not complaining. We're not hiking. That's the most crazy thing. Woo. Still a little challenging. Like I said, definitely a lot nicer with the power assist. Don't worry because even if you hit the rut you know uh -huh. the rocks will ride you out just yeah just don't worry about the sliding and yeah. this trail is called this one is called spanker, spanker. Oh, that's yeah. interesting oh, there yeah uh, uh, he is insane such a good rider Woo. Oh, i can't see oh no oh no it's so loose oh yeah that's steep Last time I rode this trail, I got really hard. 
Yeah. Yeah. I, oh, it used yeah. to be like a gap. I was expecting gap. to see it. I, I went know. around it and yeah. realized it was super small. We took the gap small. off because there was a lot of people getting hurt. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I wasn't the only one. She was probably the video that's Because you here. couldn't see it. Like, you, it went to the last second. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That one's scary too, right? Yeah. I, hit, I, hit, I broke my knee on that berm. Oh there. man, really? Yeah, I hadn't. The top of the berm was washed out. Yeah. I hadn't ridden in a while. And I was not going even that fast, but I had my small knee pads. Uh, and I just went straight to the ground and broke my knee. Wow. That sucked because it was just really? it was a mellow ride. How long ago was that? Uh, six months ago, probably. Oh, kind of recent. Yeah. Yeah. Good ride, Hannah. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> 